ask her to show you the white red albinos. Yeah, she, she'll know what you're talking about. Check out the beautiful Green Street Python going through its anthropogenic change and going through its temperamental change as well, as you can see. Here at TSK with the Sutherlands, Colette Sutherland. If you guys haven't heard of TSK, well, you've been sleeping under a rock for a long time. But welcome to our uncut. At least I have that one moment where I get to cut and do the uh, intro music and then the rest is just, if I mess up, I mess up. So while we were here in Utah, I wanted to bring you guys here. Thankfully, Dan and Colette allowed us to come into their facility and check it out. So you've probably heard of TSK Xanthic, which is the line of Xanthic, of course, that Dan and Colette uh, proved out and is what they're probably most known for in ball python world specifically. But I wanted to show you guys a few things here because this is actually one of the first places I got a snake, not here at this facility, but the first reptile show I went to ever when I moved back from Hawaii was the Pomona show. And I went there to, the main purpose was actually to pick up a snake that I had talked about with Colette, uh, the clown pied guy that you guys know on the channel, the queen, our female clown pied, that came from here at TSK. And uh, I just remember there was the one we were standing there, and I brought them by. I had brought cash. And I was sitting there, I was counting out. I specifically remember the guy. There was a couple standing right next to me, and he's like, he made a comment. He's like, "You could buy a car with that." <laughs> I want to tell you guys exactly how much it was, but he did make that comment. I was, I was remembering that this morning. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to show you guys some of the clown pies that they do have here right now, because they were the first that I know of, and that probably that you guys know of, to to actually produce clown pied ball pythons, which, in my opinion is still the best genetic project in ball pythons to this day. It's my personal favorite and it has been since the beginning and probably always will be. So this right here is the first male, him and his brother were the first clown pieds produced. And you, you guys, that was a double head to double head clutch? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I actually watched the video that you guys put out when, when you hatched that. That was right around the time that I started uh, getting into all this. And look at that animal right there. The original clown pied ball python. Just had to look at the other side of the camera make sure you guys can actually see that. <laughs> and then there's a couple of the clown pies over here. And of course, I'm going to show you guys one of the TSK Xanthics because there's one over here that is, there's a couple over here that are mind blowing TSK Xanthics. And over here, we've got another. See if she wants to have a piece of me when I pull her out. Another clown pied. This one actually looks a lot like the queen with that, just the way the pattern is on the top. And this is how I really, I love clown pies that are like this. The more pattern you've got to look at, this is actually the perfect amount of white for me on a clown pie personally. This is very, very similar looking to the queen, especially as, as the amount of pattern that's on the snake. And it just gives you so much more to appreciate and look at, I think, than, than the high white pied examples. Look at that girl. And then there's one other here that I was going to look at. A pastel version. Oh! Now she, she may not have as much pattern as I like, but look at how the, the yellow is holding on this pastel clown pied. Absolute beauty. You guys think of that? Let's show you guys the TSK Xanthic stuff. When did when did you guys prove out um, Xanthic here at TSK? Gosh, I'd have to go look. It's it's it was a long time ago. Right. It was. I don't remember. I don't remember things anymore. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> hey. <laughs> it, it, it's been over twenty years, though. So. Over twenty years. Yeah. Over twenty years. Wow. It was a while ago. Speaking of over twenty years ago, you guys know I do a lot of work with Freedom Breeder, of course. These are the first generation, the original Freedom Breeder racks, 20 years later, still holding strong right here at TSK. You guys were probably one of their first customers, yeah? Yes. yes. So check out this Azanthic right here. This is off the spider Azanthic. Oh, oh, killer bee Azanthic. Okay. 
Look at this, guys. Not a lick of yellow, of course, or any red hues or brown for that matter, which is probably the biggest thing to point out. Not a single lick of brown on this adult killer bee azanthic ball python. Look at that. Wow. Just mind blowing. Some people argue that TSK is the best line of Azanthic. And I think that that right there would make a pretty good argument for it. And here's another Azanthic right over here, which is the black, well, it's not a black Azanthic. It is just straight TAK, TSK Azanthic when I first thought it. I thought black Azanthic, and you can see why I thought black Azanthic. Look at this thing. It's black. And it's got some little white splotches coming up the belly too. Look at this animal. Absolutely mind blowingly incredible. And I don't know if you can actually see the amount of iridescence that this is possible with this animal. If you want in the sunlight, probably, which maybe we'll do towards the end of the video, but just killer. And then we've also got, of course, Dave here on the trip still. He's filming. What's up, guys? He's actually going to be doing a video here on the Dream Tree Pythons that TSK works with, which I know I've been saying TSK a lot. For those guys that don't know, TSK stands for the Snake Keeper. And uh, Dave's going to be showing, so, yeah, in my mind, right? <laughs> what, what a name. It makes sense, I think. Um, these, these guys actually used to be in California back in the day, but the last 15 years or so, they moved out to Utah. And we're on this trip. I almost kind of last minute remember, I was like, I was like, TSK is in this state. I was like, we got to see. This was not planned, because when we planned this expedition, this is an expedition, right? Like, we totally didn't realize that. TSK had moved to Utah, and then we got all excited, called them, and yeah. here we are. Yeah, I was very fortunate they allowed us to come through and check out their place. Um, there's Clint having a good conversation with Dan Clet's daughter. And they also, you know what they also do? I'm going to show some more snakes, don't worry. But they also do a lot of shipping stuff. You might know if, if you guys get shipping supplies or any kind of different reptile supplies, TSK has also been doing a lot of that the past few years, um, probably for some, some time now. But... I definitely get some of my supplies for shipping from them. Colette actually invented this new style of transport tub, especially for like bringing GTPs to shows. And this is more of one of the prototype models because I know she um, actually incorporated a little water dish so they could drink while they're transporting as well in this. So that's uh, among, <laughs> as well as being, oh, here's one with the water, as, as well as being uh, kind of a genetic mastermind and also, also, she invents uh, practical things as well. So, pretty awesome, pretty awesome guy. And I did an interview with her in, in Tinley, Tinley, Pomona, back in, it was maybe a year and a half ago or something. I'll put a link right here. You guys should check out that link because it took me actually years to get Colette on a camera. I wanted to do an interview with her like back when I bought the clown pie. And then again, another time that I was at, uh, at Pomona and they were there and she's just like, I don't really like being on camera. And then finally, I think a lot of people bugged her and were like, you gotta go over there and talk to them being on camera. And, and she did come over. So I was pretty happy about that. They've also got a lot of, look at this incubator. Things massive. I mean, for a, sink, for a standalone, I mean, you could have a room obviously that's bigger, but for a standalone incubator, it just looks very sturdy. And there's some snakes hatching. Is it possible to open it and just poke in on a snake? Colubrids. Oh, okay. So some kind of uh. These are actually Sonoran gopher snakes. Oh. Sweet. I believe it's a feline locale. Okay. Which is down in California. Awesome. So this is where the colubrids are, and now the ball python eggs. You've got a, a separate incubator for yeah. pythons, and yeah. well, I mean that makes sense, of course. But all right, we're gonna go check out the other incubator that I didn't know existed yet. <laughs> it's in here.
Okay, like I said, a, a whole room is definitely a bigger incubator than that one. <laughs> wow, this is cool. I like the way you guys have the glass on top of the... Let's check this out. Yeah, no, that's what we found worked best. And then these three are up here are hatching. Let's also slide that out just a little bit. Absolutely. What do you got there? That's a lavender albino head tristrike. Nice. Over there. Yep. How cool is that, guys? The styrofoam tubs keep it insulated on a glass top so you can see all the action of the eggs without having to actually open it up. It's genius. It, it makes sense. Yeah, I like the way it looks. I might have to uh, uh, borrow that idea for my own incubator. Yeah, uh, we had a, a ran into a glazer. Is that how you say it? A glass guy, that, and we made friends with him, and he cut all that glass for us. Nice. And it's quarter inch thick. Sweet. I actually have a place that I made a custom cage uh, for a bow I had one time out of wood and, and glass. And there's a guy who got some quarter inch um, tempered glass from. Mm -hmm. Are those tempered or is it a plate? Um, he would know. Okay. I guess it doesn't need to be tempered if it's just sitting on top of a thing and nothing's no. banging into it. Well, that's cool. What Do you have a favorite snake here right now? Was it that GTP? or? I know that was one of the first ones you showed us. I'd love to show people what your favorite snake is here at TSK. They're all so different. That's true. I mean, there's there's some that are just like, oh wow, that came out really cool, and then there's some that you've just had for a long time. Um, I mean, I have one here that's from '91, and he's just I just can't get rid of him because he's he's just like kind of part of the family, although he lives here. Um, sometimes the green trees come out, and when they go through their change, you're just like, oh, that's so cool. And so it's just, they're all different. They all have individuals. You know, some are friendly. Some want to rip your face off. And <laughs> you well, let's, let's see that one from 91. That, that, since you mentioned it, I'd definitely like to check him out. He is. 91. So where are we at right now? So that's a, so a 29-year-old ball python. Yeah, let's see. Where is he? Here he is. Wow. Look at the head on that guy. So he was produced from my first male that I ever owned, and I think one of the first females that we bought. It's cool. You can almost you can kind of almost tell the age of a ball python because they don't really start. They, they, they kind of slow down a lot as far as girth and length, but I feel like their head kind of keeps growing. Yeah, he's 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 a big boy. Look at this, guys. You can you can tell by the the size of the head kind of. Is, has always been kind of a giveaway. Show, somebody shows me a, a ball python that has serious age, which 29 years is some serious age on a ball python. The head is just kind of keeps growing more than the rest of the body. Not a, to a crazy amount, obviously, but it's, it's noticeable. Yeah, he's, he's our old man. Sweet. Well, Colette, thank you very much for allowing us to come in and film today because. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, we appreciate you guys very much. You guys have yourselves a great day. Care, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And we'll see you on Saturday for another video. Aloha. <laughs>